This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, hello and welcome to the end of another week here from Stockbox here on Research Talks with Alan Green. How are you doing, Alan? I'm very good, thanks, Mark. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. Shame about the uh, lack of sun. I think we're both experiencing the same problem, aren't we? Oh, it's unbelievable. It's it, it's uh, well. I think I uh, before we came on air, I was saying to you that uh, Tuesday last week, Morecambe was 31 degrees centigrade. Tuesday uh, a year ago, sorry, um, uh, last year, and then Tuesday this week, the same day, it was thirteen degrees centigrade. So the numbers have switched around. It's uh, you know, it's it's incredible. So yeah, it has to be asked: Are, are the Russians tampering with the atmosphere? What's happening? It's uh, strange old times. <laughs> well, yes, it wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be covering um, three mining companies today: Arc. Arco Resources, that is, uh, Nossa Terra Oil and Gas, who've had their new um, new management team appointed recently, uh, a bit of a shift in focus, and Great Southern Copper as well, who I know you interviewed this week for us on Stockbox. So are we starting off with Arco, Alan, Arco Resources? Yep, Arco Resources, and uh, of course I did speak to uh, Jack Teeling earlier in the year, who's uh, who's um, you know one of the the great veterans. John of the, of Teeling. The John Teeling, my apologies. Yeah, Jack John, that's it. It's uh, Well, maybe you're yeah. getting confused with whiskey, Jack Daniels, because I think John also has his own whiskey, doesn't he? <laughs> Teeling. He, he does, this is true. Yes, you know, I've got, uh, it's Friday, <laughs> it's Friday and I've got bourbon on the brain. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, uh, John Teeling, I spoke to earlier in the year, uh, uh, you know, so much energy, such a uh, such an enigmatic guy, you know, really, really um, uh, a, a great guy to have at the helm of any company. And of course, um, uh, this is the former Connemara mining that was rebranded um, a few years back, um, and the company owns a series of assets uh, across Ireland. Uh, we're looking into Mine River, of course. Stone Park is the the pr- pr- probably the principal asset of the company, which is uh, owned uh, joint with Group Eleven TSX listed Group Eleven. Of course, Group Eleven own seventy six and a half percent, and Argyll own. 23.5% of Stone Park. Um, and, of course, we heard uh, most recently from the company that um, that uh, they the company have um, have actually secured another license at Stone Park. Um, they have five other licenses uh, at Stone Park, which, of course, is highly prospective for zinc. Um, there, are, there are many other um, uh, mines adjacent to the company. Um, there's a maiden in first resource, Maiden and Fertile Resource at Stone Park, of course, of 5.1 million tonnes of lead and zinc at um, 11.5% grading. And, of course, nearby you've got the Palace Green asset, which is owned by Glencore, which has 45 million tonnes of zinc. Um, and uh, throughout last year, Glencore were steadily increasing their holding in Group 11, the TSX-listed TSX company Group 11. Now, well, uh, at last reckoning, they held... 26 percent um and of course there are the 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 uh the, the the acquisition of this additional license will now mean that uh they have access to an anomaly that runs through the, the through all five license um, areas which is highly significant when it comes to developing and and drilling the asset so uh the company announced at the start of april that they are uh that uh, group 11 are to commence drilling at stone park uh, they've got a planned drill campaign across uh, across this uh, anomaly uh, we're going to hear be hearing more about that in the coming uh weeks and months uh no doubt but um uh Arkle are a company of many assets they also have the mine river series of assets which includes the orgrim uh the orgrim prospect um they have other Assets are dotted around around Ireland, um, and of course the uh, uh, Mine River prospect uh, at Wicklow and County Wexford incorporates eight licenses, um, highly prospective for gold, and of course it's an area that was uh, was uh, a key part of the the Wicklow gold rush many many years ago. Um, a lot of a lot of drilling has been undertaken there um, in 
In December last year, the company announced that a drilling campaign at Inazone had been completed. They'd hit their target vein in four holes. Uh, that's having drilled some 220 metres. Um, and uh, and we had then uh, news back in February that some of the grades that come back included was uh, 1.65 grams of ton gold over over just under a metre. Uh, the grades weren't particularly spectacular, but um, John Teeling said at the time, of course, it's uh, it's just the continuity that we're more interested in, and the and and and, and, and the bigger picture represented by the assets. So um, it's it's often the way we hear these prospects being drilled, and you don't see great grades coming out of the, out of the ground, but the drilling takes place across a large area, and of course, um, it it's a uh, the, the actual size of the prospect is is uh, determined through that, and indeed that that is the case at uh, Inisoan, in particular uh, uh, the Donegal prospect. So, um, so with uh, with sampling that uh, took place last year at the Mine River asset, um, visible gold was identified. Uh, the samples there from Mine River uh, um, came out at some seven and a half grams a ton. Uh, the overall average of the sampling was 6.39 grams per ton, which uh, which is is highly significant. Um, you know, when when you can actually literally go to the asset and just pull that stuff out of the ground, uh, probably with your hand or with a spade. It's uh, these are these are are, are visible visible uh, um, assets. So um, so the company uh, most recently announced it had raised 270,000 pounds in a placing at uh, 0.25p um of course uh, John Teeling and David Cockbill both took part in that placing uh, raising the money so the company is now sort of funded to continue its its development but but, but I think the big value inflection point this year is going to be news of that drilling campaign at Stone Park being undertaken by Group 11 and of course you know uh, with Arkle holding that twenty three and a half percent stake in the asset. Um, if uh, if 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 the drilling campaign proves up uh, what uh, the team are hoping to find, if they if it's coming in with similar grades to the grades perhaps uh, um, discovered at Palace Green by uh, Glencore, uh, which of course is adjacent to Stone Park, who knows? Um, it, you know what could happen. There might be a joint venture. There could be all sorts of things happening. But either way, it's a very exciting development, and I think that's going to be the pivotal development for the year. But with the other assets the company has, it's uh, it's highly possible that um, that uh, we could see some 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 much stronger grace coming from Mine River or indeed from uh, Inner Sun. And it's pretty low, isn't it, at the moment, Alan? The share price pretty pretty the lowest. Share price hasn't performed well this year. We're currently sitting at point two three of a pence. Um, so it's been a pretty difficult year so far. But of course, the money's now raised. The company's got a valuation of just one and a half million. So you know, I think I think at this point it's, um, yeah, it's quite low. The, the 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 value of the licenses themselves are worth an awful lot more than that. Um, and I would say the twenty three and a half percent stake that um, Arc owns um, at the at Stone Park is probably worth considerably more than that itself. So um, mm. you know that I think that's worth bearing in mind. This is a it, it's a sort of company where you, you know you may not see some activity for a while but uh, when it does happen i i, I think stone park is going to be the value inflection point for the company this year anyway indeed yeah indeed it is the uh, it's, the, it's the main one isn't it that's going to give them the uh, the sort of the uh, you know, the, the catalyst event to uh, unlock value across their portfolio well thank you alan let's move on and talk about entog then Entog, well, it's been quite a year for um, Entog um, on so many levels. Of course, uh, long-standing chief executive Matt Lofgren um, finally stepped down and uh, and was replaced by Paul Welsh in in uh, well uh, towards the end of May. And of course, Paul is uh, is a man with considerable uh, experience uh, in the oil and gas business. He spent years working for Shell. He's worked for Hunt Oil, Pioneer Natural Resources. He was chief executive at Chariot Oil and Gas, Sea C- Dragon Energy, SDX Energy, Casima Holdings, and most recently uh, ACP Energy. So, um, so he has many, many years' experience. And Paul came in, uh, came into the company in May this year. And of course, not Nostaterra are focused um, on oil production in um, in the in the fields in East Texas in the USA. The the principal asset or the anchor asset is the Pine Mills field. 
Um, now, in January this year, the company announced a joint venture with Cypress, who developed a 3D seismic uh, a data system to um, to identify uh, um, opportunities and assets. And uh, the joint venture with Cypress was set up specifically to uh, to develop the area around pine mills and to and, and, and to bring it on and, and and to bring it through to bring some of the assets and certainly the idle wells through to production again um so the the, the structure is with that uh, arrangement was that uh, Nostaterra oil and gas will be operator with an 87 and uh, working uh, interest um then in february this year we started to see some uh, some uh, real movement on the shareholder register there've there've been a number of uh, different uh, um, investors coming in premier Mighton, who are well known investors aimed at the company itself uh, um, uh, and premier Mighton, of course invests into small companies uh, looking for gains and um, it's uh, it took up a 10.1% uh, uh, stake in Nostra Terra, and of course, uh, Nostra Terra now has a valuation of just over a million. So you know it uh, hasn't taken a huge amount of money to do that. Um, also, a company called Dos Hermanos, and uh, Dos Hermanos is um, is run by a gentleman by the name of James Newman, um, and James Newman uh, has been proposed by the Nostra Terra board as non-exec director, um, and uh, he's going to be coming into. The company, and I think when somebody comes in with a stake in the business like that, you know they they'll have they'll be coming in with a with a pretty clear plan of action, which uh, which is I think for shareholders has got to be a pretty exciting prospect. So that's Dossamanus. They're the largest shareholder at eleven point two five percent. Bone Energy also own eight and a half percent, and also um, a, 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 a high net worth uh, Christian Ainsworth now owns five point seven percent of the company as well. So, so this uh, this shareholding has built up uh, uh, over the year, and then of course we heard in May that uh, Matt Lofgren has uh, uh, left the company. Uh, uh, Paul Welsh came in, then uh, along with the full year results that were reported in the same month, uh, revenues uh, of course fell and uh, driven. If you enjoyed the, this the interview, of, then give us a uh, thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching. But um, the company has put out a plan, it's put a new presentation up on the website to change all that and to and 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 to drive uh, production this year and it's it it's summarized the the uh it it summarized it, it, its plan of action um it's undertaken a strategic review uh, of all its assets after the leadership change mm -hmm. it's uh made a decision to concentrate on the east texas asset base that's pine mills and also fork or fook as, as I, I think it's pronounced it's sold two assets in western texas and the remaining asset that uh, is there is currently being uh, uh, undergoing an auction process so that will be sold at some point um and the assets in south texas uh, the company is negotiating with a private buyer to completely divest all the assets in south texas so so we've got the new chief executive at the helm paul welsh obviously james newman coming in uh, the largest shareholder um coming in on the board um and what the company is is aiming to do is to is by uh, eliminating South and West Texas uh, operations, it's going to reduce its uh, spend. It's going to uh, take any cash that it's generating from its sales and reinvest them into the Pine Mills asset. It's also going to invest in increasing production facilities at Pine Mills, increasing throughput, and also lowering the uh, the cost per unit. Um, and also um, returning shut-in wells to production. I think there are 10 idle wells uh, that will be returned to production in idle mills. Um, and uh, this, of course, uh, overall will reduce downtime and increase production rates. Um, there's there's also uh, no, no intention to undertake any significant workover program for the next six years. So the business can just focus on, uh, on, uh, on uh, extracting oil, selling oil into the market and uh, just increasing volume 
Uh, and of course, with a lower cost base too, it's going to transform the the bottom line of the business. It's going to transform the numbers. So I think it's a there's a really exciting uh, um, change in prospect here. Management and ownership overall. So 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 the board overall now owns seventeen point two percent of the company. You've got the other shareholders there that I mentioned. So with seventeen point two percent and uh, and the other shareholders, that basically comes up to well over fifty percent. So that's uh, so you've got um, you've got uh, in solid invest solid investors back in the business and management owning well over fifty percent of the company, and that's good um, by any standards. That's a really important uh, development. So um, I think this company has just ticked over for a long time. It's never really realised its potential. Possibly has had too many assets, but I think the st- strategic review that the company has undertaken has been transformational. And um, obviously the proof of the pudding is in the eating, but once these other assets are auctioned off, we see this other world's turn to production. I think the first trading update from the company is going to be a real value inflection point for investors, because if those numbers have jumped, then uh, it's only going to, it's only going to go one way. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a, it's a real shift in focus, well not shift in focus, but a shift on focus to, to the Pine Mills asset and, and really putting pretty much all efforts into that project. Indeed, mm. uh, I, I, and I think the I think the important uh, the, the important thing is that uh, throughout the strategic review, you know, some, the, the West Texas and the Southern assets could have been bought online at some point, but um, but uh, logistically, Lake Texas is a huge area. Logistically, you're stretching your resources, so by focusing it all in one place, uh, you reduce your logistical cost because you there's just one operating base effectively um and uh and, and you can keep everything close at hand mm-hmm. you you can also focus where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck and of course you've got these 10 idle wells bring them back on stream uh produce more oil sell more oil into the market you increase your revenues increase your gross profits and at the same time you've cut out a massive uh percentage of your overheads and uh mm-hmm. you know i think uh here we are now i mean uh nostaterra is trading at point one one p so we had um, uh, on the on the news of the uh, of the uh, the appointment and the board changes, the shares popped up to one point five p, but they've come back down since then, probably because there's been no news to speak of. You know, with, mm. then we had the news about James uh, Newman coming in, um, and uh, and uh, the shares have turned a little bit. But I think there's a real opportunity here now to pick up the shares. I mean, the company now has a valuation <laughs> worth just over one million. Uh, one million pounds, and I mean that's a company mm. that's generating two point eight million dollars per annum, uh, down from four million. Now, who knows? Who, who's to say that they can't sell off those assets and then return turnover to four million dollars next year with, with a much lower um, cost base? You know, that's uh, that's the prospect that's uh, I think immediately uh, um, on the cards for the company, and uh, it'll. It, I, I think some investors may wait and decide to see what the first trading statement uh, says but um there could be an opportunity perhaps just to buy now while the shares are on the floor and um and uh, you could see some real upside later on the year well it's always um it's two com- companies we've spoken about this morning that have a market cap of circa one million pounds i mean it's just it's almost above nominal value isn't it at that point really um you know it, uh, yeah the yeah. shell value of companies sort of circuit that anyway a bit below maybe on, on london but um yeah there's two companies there who are, are pretty much at, at, at rock bottom prices and of course with them um, the change of management change of leadership there and um, sort of renewed um renewed enthusiasm renewed focus on um, where the near term potential is and yes is looking at that latest presentation there it is all about that the pine mills potential there that they've gotten everything to be reinvested in in, in that the- asset so potentially it is a good opportunity to uh, to take up now before um, before they do actually you know um deliver let's say or start delivering on on the new strategy um so thank you alan for talking to us about ntog uh, hopefully we can uh, yeah be seeing more of them um, throughout the course of this year and how things are developing um with the project but we will finish off with great southern copper great, great southern copper indeed so great southern copper of course i interviewed um yes. sam garrett the chief executive uh, on wednesday this week um after what you know was a real landmark uh, development for the company and of course great southern copper gsc use the epic code focused on the san lorenzo and speculator products projects in chile 
Uh, of course, um, Chile's, you know, you've got the Andean mountain range, which is the backbone, if you like, of South America. And it's host to the world's principal source of uh, mined copper, gold, molybdenum, denim and, uh, and silver. Um, and copper in uh, Chile is principally hosted in large scale, low grade porphyry type deposits. And of course, uh, IOCG deposits um, and, uh, and and across the, the assets, um, uh, the, uh, Grey Southern Copper has has a, a good cross section of exposure, um, but it's really added to the assets this year. So the the San Lorenzo uh, project, um, which is fifty kilometers northeast of La Serena, um, is some twenty five thousand hectares of explore and exploit concessions, and it owns rights to one hundred percent of the projects in that region. Uh, with uh, a two two million dollar purchase option agreement payable over six to eight years, uh, no royalty payments at the end of it too, which is which is always good. So that's uh, that's hundred percent ownership, and then of course a, a speculator, which I think has been the principal focus for the company, which is um, one hundred and seventy kilometers south of San Lorenzo. On, um, it, it's on the same coastal metallogenic belt. Um, and uh, so many uh, mines and operations, historical and existing around here. And it own, owns rights to 100% of the projects uh, around that, uh, uh, that area. And of course, um, in, in particular, the, uh, uh, across the um, uh, speculators, you have uh, a number of uh, prospects, the Abundante pro prospect, the Victoria prospect, um, and also, of course, uh, the Teresita prospect, uh, where the company has uh, undertaken some uh, extensive drilling work this year. It's uh, undertaken a scout drilling campaign. Um, and we heard from the company in March that the drilling at Teresita had intersected uh, uh, a 10 to 15 metre wide vein. Um, grades were uh, 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 around the two, two grams per tonne uh, for gold, 1.3% copper. Sam said at that point that the results had exceeded expectations and but also had confirmed the target models that the company had developed from surface exploration work. And I think, you know, that's the that's the sign of a good geology team in action, you know, proved it up. Yep, we thought that was there. That's what the modeling told us. The drill has proved that up. And the scout the scout drilling demonstrated that this this uh, 10 to 15 meter wide vein um, uh, uh, stretches as far as potentially as five kilometers in strike length and also includes an uh, intrusive related gold system, breccia style uh, mineralization, uh, a whole host of, uh, uh, I, th I think Sam said in one particular interview that, um, you know, you could walk across it and the drill, pro the drill targets are literally sticking out of the ground. You know, it's, uh, it's that abundant. So, um, so very solid uh, developments, but, um, we also heard from the company in February that um, it had expanded the Speculariza project with the purchase uh, of the Cerro Negro and Artisma prospects. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, Cerro Negro includes the high-grade Mastaza copper uh, silver deposit previously mined by Anto Vergasta, uh, while Artem Artemisa includes historical workings adjacent uh, to uh, the existing targets the company has at, at, uh, at Victoria and, uh, and a, a number of other prospects. Um, and what this, um, what the uh, purchase of these two prospects uh, has done is secured and consolidated uh, Great Southern Copper's control of, uh, of, of an anomaly called the Colorado Lithocap. So a complete area where these anomalies run through is now controlled and owned and operated by, by uh, Great Southern Copper. And of course, this week uh, I interviewed Sam uh, on the back of the, uh, the fact that the company had undertaken its 90 days due diligence and it had signed the purchase option for Artemisa uh, that's 60, 1600 hectares of new concessions uh, with rights to earn 100% uh, rights to mine on the uh, on the uh, on the asset and also the uh, the company added the, the Chero Negro uh, prospect the due diligence would be complete there soon and uh, could be can, can also be added to the company's arsenal of, of assets um, and I think uh, back in April we uh, had a had a series of assays back from the Abundante and Terrasita scout drilling campaign. All of the holes that were drilled across, you know, around that ten to fifteen meter wide vein, all the holes that were drilled intersected copper and gold, uh, anomalous copper and gold 
Um, so, uh, typical examples include 17 metres at 0.52% copper, 20 metres at 0.57 grams per, grams per tonne gold. And uh, Sam said that the results strongly suggest the Victoria prospect could be another intrusive related gold system target. Um, Terrasheeta's um, mineralised vein system is huge and uh, the drill pipeline is looking very strong for the company going forward. But uh, but but as with anything, of course, the um, the 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 uh, uh, mining stocks depend on results and depend on cash generation. And it's um, it, it, it I, I think it's been a, a challenge for the company to to uh, illustrate and demonstrate this this, this added value. But um, I do believe now they've got uh, Artemis are secured, um, and obviously those historical workings. As we've heard with other companies, you know some historical workings. Perhaps there are tailing tailing stumps there that can be that can be uh, worked through. They can apply modern techniques or uh, uh, flotation techniques to extract uh, the mineralization from there. So you know potentially all sorts of things could be happening from these assets in the near future. And you know looking at Great Southern Copper, it's got a valuation at the moment. The shares are trading one point five eight p, just under one point six p. Um, they trade as high as three point eight p on the year. We've got a market capitalization of four point six million, which, and I think, with a a bunch of as, uh, assets uh, in Chile, cited amongst uh, this area that's so prolific historically for copper and gold production, I think uh, there's a really exciting set of prospects uh, um, uh, here for the company, and uh, I'm looking forward to Sam's uh, next next moves, and of course, hearing hearing about the. Uh, the work the company is doing at the uh, Artemis and Chiranegro prospects. Yes, indeed, indeed. They've got a very active uh, program coming up, haven't they? And there's a special feature coming out um, from Stockbox that was recorded recently that will be coming out early next week, looking at, um, yeah, across that entire Especularita project. They've got multiple different types of deposits and... Um, and um, you know, yeah, a very expensive, expansive drill program to to go and test some of these targets. So they're definitely setting up for a pretty active um, drilling season, which is always good. Um, and let's see what that turns up. But thank you, Alan, as always, for your time today. Great Southern Copper, Arca Resources, and Nostra Terra Oil and Gas. And have a good weekend. Thank you, Mark. Have a good weekend. <laughs>